Alrighty families and fangirls, it's been a few days since the Apple event and I've had a little bit of time to break everything down, I've had a time to look over everything and I'm gonna give my honest opinion on what I thought of the event as a whole. I'm gonna focus obviously on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I will also talk about the new AirPods because there is something I want to talk about with that and also we'll even talk about the future of what is going to come. And also we have a little update on the Galaxy Buds 3 because I know a lot of you have been watching my videos from the previous, so we do have a small update. It's very, very small, so stay tuned to the very end. But let's get this episode going. Alrighty, the main story of the day is the Apple September event. Now, I have had a chance to sit down and watch the event when it was happening. I've also had a chance to go back, also take a look at a few things and anything that I might have missed. And honestly, I gotta say that even though the event was just all right, it wasn't bad, I kinda didn't really feel surprised because again, when you're in this field, when you're covering reports, when you're doing all this, the surprise element just kind of gets lost. You'd have to be an extreme casual to really be surprised, or at least know nothing to be surprised at what was gonna happen. But essentially, Everything happened as we were talked about. The iPhone 15s have begun the process of doing away with lightning. We now have USB-C on the iPhones. And again, while my stance is still the same, I don't agree with the government forcing a company to do something against their will. I will admit that in this situation, it is a very beneficial thing for the consumers. Because listen, I understand that a government stepping in, telling Apple what to do, making them have to make all these changes is not the most ideal thing. You never want to be forced to be told to do something. And while I do agree with that argument, at the flip side of it, the benefits of now coming in with USB-C are now limitless. So I'm just very glad that the consumers get a win in this. That's really who ultimately wins in this situation. Because Apple is going to go all in on USB-C. We saw that at the event. They have brand new AirPods. They have USB-C EarPods, which if you're still using EarPods, well, USB-C models are now available. And who knows how they're going to sound. They're probably going to sound like crap. Or maybe they might be decent. Who knows? But that's not the only thing at the event. We also saw the transition period for Apple and USB-C. If you went on their website and you looked at all of the accessories, they essentially did exactly what they did with the 30 pin connector and now they're doing it with lightning. So now they have adapters, they have dongles and other things that will help to transition easier. So by the time you're done with lightning, you'll no longer need the lightning cable. But I think after five years, almost seven years of Apple beginning using USB-C on MacBooks and then iPad Pros and others, I really think that at this stage, Apple doesn't have to worry about people buying in on those accessories. They were just kind of made just to satisfy anyone that needs that. But there were a few noteworthy things, I was about to say noty, noteworthy things that I noticed. Apple did not release a new MagSafe battery pack and they discontinued not only that, but also the Duo Charger. Now fear not, there are reports suggesting that Apple will debut a brand new version in the coming months and also there will be a new version of the Duo Charger. It is reportedly set to now be a triple charger. We'll have to get more information on that. And they're also saying because it will use USB-C, there will be more power to the pack or power to the punch, whichever way you want to go with that catchphrase. But that was something that I wanted to point out because I don't know if anybody really talked about that on the accessory side. But now taking a look back at the iPhones, the real big standout of the show obviously was the 15 Pro and the Pro Max, specifically the Pro Max. It really seems that Apple cares a lot about the computer element with the camera technology, the computational processing. They also really care a lot about the lenses and they really seem to strive with the Pro models being able to do the extreme when it comes to camera performance. The Pro Max, on the other hand, got the biggest upgrade and the best, I think, camera tech on the iPhone this year. It's no secret. But it reminds me of the old days where Apple would reserve something for the bigger model to give it that more premium experience. Where obviously nowadays they kind of give it to both models. I like having that exclusivity to one specific model. So for those that want the biggest and the best, there you go. But I understand that a lot of people are not going to be happy about that. On top of that, the color options are also really nice. The titanium design looks very, very cool. I will miss uh, stainless steel. I think stainless steel was a great addition to the iPhones, making it feel premium. But it does claim that it is much lighter, so we will see it in the real world test. I'm still debating on if I'm going to get it right away, or maybe I'll wait till the hype dies down. I'll think about that. 
But lastly, to end off the talk about this event, the real game changer was Apple going all in on USB-C. Now, that is really where we go from here. This is kind of where we continue the stride because now the question becomes, and it's very simple, is Apple going to keep USB-C on the iPhones for long? Now, if you don't remember, a long time back, there were reports that Apple were actively developing iPhones with no ports, no buttons, and just MagSafe. And there have been several reports suggesting that Apple is still keeping that project going. Now, we aren't going to speculate when it might happen or if it's going to happen, but it does raise the question, is Apple's endgame to remove the port altogether and go all in on wireless charging? Well, as long as the EU has their grips on them, I don't think that's going to be for a while, but Apple has been able to find some loopholes around some things. So for now, they are able to work around it, but I think it does raise the question, is Apple going to keep USB-C for long? And the answer I think is yes. I think that this is a very big change. I think Apple is going to keep this around for a while. They got to get everybody transitioned. And then who knows, maybe five, seven, who knows, maybe another decade passes and then they will go wireless. But until then, USB-C is rocking the iPhones. It feels so good now that one cable is going to charge everything. And I am still debating on if I'm going to get the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I have the 14 Pro Max. It's not going to be a significant change, but I really do want USB-C and I do also want a better iPhone altogether. So at the end of the month, I'll probably make a decision and we'll see how long the wait is for the pre-orders. Who knows? Maybe it'll go into November. But either way, let me hear your thoughts about the event. What did you think of it? And what is your stance on Apple adopting USB-C via the EU and also all of this? I do want to hear what you guys have to say and write them down in the comments below. And now a word from our sponsor. Alrighty, the last story, the final story of the day is the Galaxy Buds 3. Now, a while back, I had been covering these rumors, I had been covering these reports, and a lot of the reports were suggesting that we were going to see this in August. Well, August passed and no Galaxy Buds 3. And a lot of people were like, what happened? Well, according to several reports, some new information has come out and it seems that Samsung is still actively developing the Galaxy Buds 3. They are, of course, going to be going with a more smaller design, as I mentioned in the previous episodes. However, though, there is a little bit of a kicker in the rye here with the reports, which is now why I'm, when I'm covering the Galaxy Bud 3, I'm going to be a little bit more pickier in which stories I decide to add and which stories I decide to use as sources. Because if I've learned anything from the last few months, be very careful with your sources. So in this case, I'm only going to pull from one. And that one source is claiming that the Galaxy Buds 3 are going to be debuted alongside of the new Samsung Galaxy S24, and it is also going to be the start of the new lineup with the Galaxy Buds 3, 3 Pro, and then so on and so forth. Now, we don't have any other information other than that, but it is still in active development and they are still working on it as we speak. So we will probably see it now in February and that is all we have to go off of. And that's all I have on the Galaxy Buds 3. Again, I will update you more when we get more information. I will get more news. But I just wanted to put this out there as a small little update for any of you those wondering what happened. And that's it for today's episode of Technoid. Now, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the like button. If you disliked the video, you can hit the dislike button. That helps circulate my videos as well. As always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all on the next episode. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Take care, stay safe, have a good day, and peace.